We got a new toy, the Omtec Polar. We're gonna set it up and test it out right now. What is up? A welcome back. Do you like to do a builder to make it? So do we. We have a new video each week. This week, we got a new toy. Omtec sent us the new Polar 350. Yes, it's their new desktop laser. It's a 50 watt laser with a 12 by 20 bed. Actually, it's 11.8 by 20.1 <laughs> to be exact. And it has all the bells and whistles. It has an onboard camera, a water chiller, air assist. Its exhaust has an external inline fan to go with it. And I'm really excited about its rotary tool. Yes. <laughs> and it uses industry standard software. So I know if you've heard of lasers, you've heard of light burn. And it uses light burn. So we're excited to unbox this thing, set it up, and do our first test cut. Step one, we're gonna unbox it. This thing was delivered by freight. They used a lift gate and a pallet jack to actually get it into our warehouse. From there, it was too heavy to lift and bring in, so we thought we would uncrate it out in the warehouse and then hopefully it would be a little lighter to bring in. Yeah, so we were able to see what came in the box. We had all kinds of goodies here. You can see the inline fan. You can see all the hoses and cables, um, all kinds of goodies. We took those out and then it had these cool straps on it. Yeah, it was ready to be lifted. Yeah, well, I was a little nervous that if once we lifted it with those straps, I was like, are they attached on the bottom? It's not gonna slide off, is it? I had and faith, I just lifted. We did, we just lifted, but then later when I got it onto the desk, there was nothing holding them on. They could have slipped off. Well, it was, it was hooked on the little feet on the bottom. <laughs> and once we got it out of the crate, we did notice that that's where the extra materials were like all their sample materials and these are nice size sample materials these yeah are like 12 by 20 sheets of acrylic there's five sheets there some, some cardboard cardboard and some, some birch. baltic birch yeah then the tumbler tool was actually like on the side it was packaged this is part of the side foam tucked in the side foam. tucked in so don't throw away your crate until you check all your foam step two hardware setup. This thing is 104 pounds, so it did take two of us to get it up onto the table, but it really only takes one of us to set it up. <laughs> That's right, and that was me. So we started with the exhaust. We started with the ventilation hoses. There's two sizes, a small hose and a large hose. We started with the small hose and added that to the back of the laser and clamped it down. Then we added the reducer to the intake of the inline fan. Here, Garrett is showing to stretch the reducer a little bit. We're adding a little heat and it makes it a little bit flexible so that it slides on nice and tight. And then we attach the other end of the small hose to the reducer and clamp it down. And then on the other end of the inline fan, we will attach one end of the large hose and clamp it down. The other end of the large hose is used for your exhaust. So you'll either exhaust that out of a window, out of your garage, or you may even attach it to a filter. Then we'll attach the power cord. After that, we added the remote interlock connector. So in your little toolbox, you'll see that the remote interlock connector and the keys are zip tied together. This is a two part power system. The first part of the power will be to add this interlock connector in the back. So we'll just plug that in. While we're here, we're gonna go ahead and turn the beam attenuator all the way up so that you'll feel it stop. It's at 100%. We'll come around the front and we'll add the crumb tray and check our coolant level. You want to make sure that this is full. We'll go ahead and plug in our machine, flip the switch in the back, come back to the front and add our key, turn the key to on, and suddenly we have power. Once it's powered up, we're going to double check and ensure that the air assist is flowing. So you can see setup was really very easy. It's just simply attaching these hoses, adding the power, turning it on. Yeah, I mean, that was pretty easy. Step three, 
software setup. We're gonna start by adding these two USB cables into the back of the laser. One is for the camera, one is for the laser. Next, we're gonna go into light burn. Now we already had light burn. We use light burn on other lasers, like our X-Tool and the other Omtech lasers. To add our laser, we went to devices, find my laser. It found it on the USB. We're gonna select the serial USB. We're gonna go next. I'm gonna name it Polar. I'm gonna verify my bed size. This is millimeters. I'm gonna assume it's okay. We should make sure that the laser starts at the top right. And I'm gonna say okay. Back to the devices drop down and we're gonna select Polar. Next, we did a little test by drawing a square and framing it out just to make sure that the two were talking. Software installation and getting it to talk to the software was also super easy. That's usually where a lot of things get sticky. Yes, the software setup is super simple. You can't hardly mess it up with the USB direct connect cables. It does connect through Wi-Fi. We just haven't set that up yet. That'll be something we try later. Step four. Time to set up the camera. Now this is pretty easy as well. This is all done through Lightburn. In Lightburn, we're going to go to the menu, Laser Tools, select Calibrate Camera Lens, select your camera. Ours is the bottom one on this list. And here you should be able to see your camera view and see your laser bed. We're going to select Fisheye Lens and hit Next. Now the first step it's going to tell you is to print out this little um, dot pattern? Yeah, this dot pattern. Now, what we didn't realize and learned later is that you can't just use this, you're gonna have to hold this dot pattern up. Yeah, you're gonna have to put it on an angle. And you can't just hold it like this because it's too floppy and it's too angled. You're definitely gonna want to glue this uh, or paste it or, or tape something, it, tape it. Attach it. it. Yes, attach something. it somehow to something stiff. A little piece of cardboard. We had this little piece of MDF laying around. So we made sure that we did it with this MDF behind it. From here, you're going to use that dot pattern to align your camera. You're going to have to pay attention to this diagram in the upper left corner. It's going to show you where your dot pattern needs to be in relation to your camera. The picture on the right just shows you where your dot pattern will sit on the laser bed. You're gonna move this dot pattern around and you're gonna do this nine times. The dot pattern is going to be positioned kind of like a tic-tac-toe board. There are three boxes across the top, three in the middle, three at the bottom. And you're gonna position this dot pattern in each of those nine boxes uh, and capture it each time. Pay attention when you get to the side boxes and the corner boxes, the view in in this diagram in the top left is going to have you angle your dot pattern uh, in such a way that the camera is picking it up at an angle and that's how you're going to get your something less than one score now we never got our score down to this 0.3 or less ideal that it speaks of we got ours under one that was the closest we could get but it seems to be okay for us and we just continued through each of the different capture windows until we got to the end and finish. Once your camera setup is complete, you're gonna go back to calibrate camera alignment. Our camera on this laser is mounted to the lid, so we're just gonna make sure that that lid is closed. So here we're gonna enter our material thickness. We're using eighth inch birch, so we're gonna select three millimeters. We're going to set our fill speed, fill power, our line speed, our line power, and then we're going to keep it at a 100 scale for this size laser. We're going to frame it and then hit start and it's going to engrave this pattern, sample image and pattern over here on the right. Once the test pattern is complete, you're going to hit next. Music 
and now you're going to align the crosshairs to the center of each of the numbered test patterns and put it right in the center well, as close to the center as you can <laughs> and click on each one you're going to do this four times once you're done you're going to click capture image if during calibration when you're lining those crosshairs your image looks upside down that seemed to be okay for us we were a little concerned about that but once we completed the next step and refresh the image, the orientation was correct on our screen. So I think it's supposed to be that way. Yeah, and that wasn't too bad. I mean, it was tedious and we never actually hit, uh, I guess, perfect, but it wasn't that bad. We were still within that less than one score. So the camera seems to be aligned and calibrated correctly. It might be off a couple of millimeters. Maybe in the future we try it again if that proves to be an issue yeah um, when we're doing something super intricate but right now it seems to be working as is step five time for a test cut everything is set up everything is ready to go and i found an omtech light burn laser cut test file <laughs> yeah that is a mouthful and we're gonna go ahead and run that i'm gonna leave all the settings as is like i downloaded it except i'm gonna change the engrave settings to be 150 speed, 50% power, and 300 DPI. Let's see how it goes. All right, well that came out great. And I love this little card. This little card is great because now I know what all of my best speed and power settings are for this uh, eighth inch birch. If I do this for all my materials, I'll know what all of my materials' perfect settings will be. Yeah, what those perfect settings will be. Yeah, you can tell that some of the holes where it did start cutting, you can see where it started to burn the hole, and then that golden brown is what you want. That's the perfect speed and power setting. You can see some that almost came through but didn't quite make it. So. This is a great little file. We'll put a link to this little file down below so that you guys can use it as well. I'm really excited about this new laser. I think this is a great starter laser. So there's a little less hand holding than on the Glowforge with this one, but it's a great, it still has all those safety features. It's a great way to start learning lasers. And because we're using light burn, or if you start with light burn, it's a great way to start understanding that industry standard software, almost all the lasers work with light burn. So it's a great tool to start with. Now you don't have to start with light burn. It does come with its own software, RD works, but our recommendation is go ahead and pay for that light burn license and start using that tool. I yeah. can't wait to do more videos with this. Um, this was just a setup video, an unboxing and a setup this week, but we're really excited to start using the Tumblr tool. Yes, I cannot wait to get into that rotary tool. Yeah, yeah, I'm looking forward to it and all the kind of fun things we make with it. And I agree with you totally. This, it doesn't have all the hand holding that Glowforge does, but it it's not nearly as hard to set up as the 80 watt laser was. Yeah, we didn't have to align mirrors on this one. Yep. We didn't have to set up a separate water chiller and understand how the water chiller works. It's all built in, so it's a great starter laser. Again, once you go from this one to the next one, if you decide you want a bigger laser in the future, light burn, you'll already know how to use that same software. So. And you know who knows about that light burn software? I do. A lot of our patrons know about that <laughs> light burn software. We talk lasers all the time over there in Patreon. I'm always giving them uh, files that go right in the light burn. All the files that I make are made for light burn. And they use them they give me feedback they make some of their own so good job patrons great yeah. way to go guys <laughs> and we do appreciate if you like watching our videos give us that thumbs up make a comment give us some interaction it really does help out our videos in the long run we're about out of time i have to go find something to do <laughs> You have to go find something to do until Tuesday where we'll see you for Test Cut Tuesday. It's another laser thing that we do. And then we'll see you next Friday where we'll do it, build it, and make it again.